Hi. We are reading the story. We are on page 153. We're talking about Saul and David. My bun is it's crazy today. It's just flopping here, flopping there. Okay. Now, no matter how close Saul got to David, David consistently outmaneuvered him. David was quite accustomed to the raids, but none was so daring as his encounter with Saul in the cave. All right, we left off right there. After, I have to reread it because for us it's been a long time. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all of Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in there and Saul was using the restroom in the cave because they didn't have like, you know, rest areas and rest stops at that time. You couldn't just, you know, go in and use the bathroom. So that was the rest area, it was the cave. They didn't even have paved roads. David and his men were far back in the cave. And the men said, this is the day the Lord spoke to you. I, that, he, that he would give you, sorry, well, this is what the Lord said. They said, remember what the Lord said when he said, I will give you your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. And David crept up, but he cut off just a corner of Saul's robe. And afterward, David was conscience stricken for having just cut even the corner and David said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay a hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. And with these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. So, Ooh, yes. I'm sure David pinched his nose when he came, came up and got all back Thank you for sharing that tidbit. Um, TMI, man. So this, it really looked, here was a, here was a test. This was a test for David because it really looked like this was the time that it, that, um, that David could take the throne because it was a perfectly opportune time. Saul wasn't expecting it. It was right there, but how did, what was the clue that this was not, the Lord's way, that this would have been, um, well, not the Lord's way. What was the clue? I don't know. He would have had to um, defeat the king, take out the king. He would have had to take, reach and take the throne for himself rather than receiving. Remember, our promises from God are received. They're not reached out and taken. Um we don't take for ourselves. The Lord gives and we receive it. Yes. Okay, so um, David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed down with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen? When men say David is bent on harming you, this day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I will not lay my hand on the Lord, on my Lord, because he is the Lord's anointed. He he means little Lord, L with a little L, because he is the big L Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. I mean, defeat you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down and trying to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. and May the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers comes evil deeds. So my hand will not touch you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? Will it be a dead dog? Maybe a flea? David, I think it's being a little... <laughs> What's it? What? what is he saying? He's asking Saul, what are you out here doing? What are you pursuing? Are you pursuing a dead dog? Perhaps a flea? <laughs> I mean, he's getting into it. Actually, speaking of that, I think it takes a lot of patience and belief in God to not go ahead and destroy the guy who's been trying to destroy you. Yes. 
May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May I he... think he was thinking of Solomon as well. His son? Yes, Saul's son. No, Jonathan. Oh, right. Solomon is David's son. I don't think Solomon is here yet. He hasn't, hasn't been born. Um, may the Lord consider my cause and uphold it, and may he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David finished speaking, Saul asked, is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good that you did to me, and the Lord delivered me into your hands, but you didn't kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him go away, get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you for how you've treated me today. I know you'll surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will not kill off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David promised to Saul, and Saul returned home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. That's an important verse, and I don't exactly know what it means. David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my savior from violent people. You save me, Lord. I call to you, uh, sorry, I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and have been saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled about me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be my God, the rock, my savior. All right, let's read this last little paragraph. The peace treaty between David and Saul, which was basically an agreement not to kill each other, should have settled the matter. But Saul, always unpredictable, turned on David and pursued him once again. Wisely, David retreated with his band of loyalists to the Philistine territory out of Saul's reach. I think that's what they mean when he went up to the stronghold. I'm not sure. How ironic that David, Israel's king to be, pitched his tent with the very people who waged war against his own nation and eventually took the life of his closest friend. Meaning who? Jonathan. Jonathan. All right, we will continue on that later. This is a long David. This is a long portion before he gets to be king. Okay, he had a long wait. I think he waited. He waited 13 years. Okay, this thing. My the wonder belly keeps moving here. Um. The wonder belly is ready to train my. Uh. What was I going to say? He waited 13 years. Joseph waited 13 years. And somebody else. Went, oh, and at 13 years, it was when that was when Ishmael was sent away. Okay, goodbye. That is all for now. And see my bun. Bun. Oh, dear bun.